Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making chocolate truffles part two. Between all of you, you requested 64 different flavours of truffles. So here today we're going to make the top 10 most requested truffles. Starting with number 10, you requested Nutella. If you have a mould, you can just pipe Nutella into the moulds like we did with some of the fillings in part one last time. If you don't have a mould, just put some Nutella into a small container Use a knife to mark the surface so you can see where your squares will be and push a hazelnut into the top of each one. Freeze that overnight and then in the morning it will be firm enough for you to cut into squares using a hot knife. It was so nice of you to request an easy one first up because some of the others I had to develop recipes for you so this is good to start easy. Dip your frozen cubes into tempered chocolate then use your fork to scoop it out Tap it on the side of the bowl to get off any excess chocolate and place it on the baking paper. If you don't know what I mean by using tempered chocolate, then you must watch the tempering chocolate video before making these. I'll put a link to the chocolate video playlist at the end of this video and you can find Truffles Part 1 there and the tempering video there as well. Get a piece of hazelnut, dip it into the chocolate and stick it to the top of each truffle. Coming in at number 9 is the coconut filling. To make this, place sugar and glucose syrup and water into a saucepan and heat over high heat stirring until the sugar is dissolved. For all of the quantities that you'll need to make these truffles, go to the website howtocookthat.net. There's a link in the description below this video. Once the sugar is dissolved, wash down the sides of the pan using a wet pastry brush. The purpose of this is so that the sugar crystals on the edge don't make the sugar in the solution crystallise and also so that it doesn't burn before your sugar syrup's ready. Watch it until the bubbles begin to thicken. If you listen carefully, you'll hear a change in sound from quick little bubbles to slowly popping bubbles. And watch it until it turns golden. If you're not sure whether the colours change, because it can be a bit hard to see through all the bubbles, just pull it off the heat and let the bubbles subside and then you'll be able to see more clearly whether it's still totally clear or if it started to turn golden. Once it is golden, make sure it's over the heat and stir in your cream and coconut milk. It's going to steam suddenly, so make sure your hands are out of the way. And then once that initial burst of steam is gone, keep stirring it until it's smooth. Add a candy thermometer to the, to the side of the pan and heat it without stirring until it reaches 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Then at that point, remove it from the heat and stir in your desiccated coconut. Pour that into a lined brownie tin and allow it to cool just at room temperature. Once it's cooled, remove it from the tin and cut it into long slices and use two knives to shape it into a point at the top. Now this mixture could be rolled into balls or shaped however you like it. This is just how I'm doing it. You can use your imagination as to how you want it to look. Then place it on a tray in the fridge for at least an hour to firm up. Once you've done that, you should be able to easily slice it into small bite-sized pieces and drop them one at a time into your tempered chocolate. Scoop it out with the fork just like we did before, tap it on the side of the bowl and then place it onto some baking paper and give a little sprinkle with coconut on the top so people know what's inside. The number eight most requested truffle was hazelnut and some others have requested praline so let's do a hazelnut praline filling and double dip it in chocolate. Place some chocolate into a bowl and pour over some hot cream and leave that for a minute and then stir it until it's smooth. Spread your hazelnuts onto some baking paper and put your sugar and water and glucose syrup into a saucepan. Stir again until the sugar is dissolved, brushing down the sides of the pan with a pastry brush and then leave it without stirring, just like you did before, until it starts to go golden. As soon as it's ready, you want to pour it over the hazelnuts and leave that to cool completely. When it's cold, it will be solid and it will snap into sharp pieces a bit like glass. Place it into a strong bag, you might need to put it into two so that it doesn't spill everywhere. And now for the fun bit, smash it with a rolling pin until you get lots of tiny pieces. And then pour that into the ganache and stir it in. Cover it with plastic wrap and leave it just at room temperature overnight to set up. Once it's set, take spoonfuls of your ganache and roll it into neat balls. There were also lots of requests for white chocolate and white chocolate doesn't tend to be as firm or as easy to temper as dark and milk chocolate do but if you use fake chocolate with vegetable fat in it it doesn't taste as nice. So what I suggest you do is use a mixture of both for coating your white chocolate truffles. Melt your fake chocolate first as that melts at a higher temperature 
and then stir in your finely chopped real chocolate. Again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about with real chocolate, fake chocolate and tempering, then just click on the chocolate playlist at the end of this video and there's one there that will explain all of that. Dip the balls of ganache into white chocolate and tap it on the side of the bowl to remove any excess and then place it onto the baking paper to set. Once it's set, hold the base of the truffle and dip the top of it into dark chocolate. Tap your hand to help shake off any excess chocolate and then turn it carefully the right way up and place it back on the paper which is actually trickier than it looks. Once they're set, put some white chocolate into a Ziploc bag and pipe some swirls onto the top. Now if your chocolate's too runny like it is here and it's hard to pipe, just put the bag flat in the fridge for a moment to let it cool down and that will thicken up your chocolate. If you leave it in there too long it'll set completely, so just keep an eye on it and then pipe your swirls on top. At number seven we have orange chocolate truffles. Now these are a fairly simple one and you can use this same technique for other fruits as well. Grate the rind of two oranges on a fine grater. Be careful just to get the orange bit and don't keep grating into the white because that's very bitter. Juice the oranges and place the juice and the rind into a saucepan. Let it boil and now what we're doing here is we're concentrating that juice and the flavour of the orange into a smaller amount of liquid so that we can put the maximum amount of flavour into our ganache. Keep a watch on it, take it off the heat so you can see how much liquid you've got left and keep boiling it until it looks thickened like this. Pour it through a sieve and if you want sort of a bitter marmalade type flavour, push on the rind to release more of that bitter flavour, otherwise just pour it through the sieve and don't push on the rind. Pour two to three tablespoons of your hot juice over your chocolate and then stir it until it's smooth. I used three tablespoons of juice here and I found it a little soft when I was rolling it into balls so I suggest that you just use two tablespoons and that will make it a little bit firmer. Place that in a container and put it in the freezer overnight. The next day take some white chocolate and using a potato peeler shave small pieces off the edge and put this into a bowl ready for dipping. Roll your cold ganache into balls and then drop it into the chocolate Scoop it out, tap it on the side of the bowl and then drop it straight into the white chocolate shavings and roll it around and then put it on the baking paper to set. Number six are peanut butter squares. Take some peanut butter and mix a little bit of jam into it just to get the sweetness that you like. Place it in a container lined with baking paper and freeze it overnight. Then using a finely serrated knife, you can cut that into cubes. If you don't want to use jam in there, you could melt a little bit of chocolate in with it, just something to give it a little bit of sweetness and make it easier to cut. Spread some white chocolate thinly onto a piece of nonstick baking paper. And if you want, you can make a pattern in it using the palette knife or I'm using the back of a paintbrush to do a wood type grain pattern on it. If you've got chocolate transfer sheets, you could use that here like we did in the first video. I'm just showing you a different alternative if you can't get hold of the transfer sheets. Then spread dark chocolate over the top. And once it's starting to set, cut it into squares. Then leave it to set completely and then peel it off the paper. Dip your squares of frozen peanut butter and jelly into the chocolate and then top each one before it sets with a patterned square. Truffles number five are peanut butter and jelly moulded chocolate truffles. Now this mould that I'm using is just a cheap $2 ice cube tray. It's got a smooth edge on the sides and then at the base it's got like a rough silicon top so it gives two textures to the same chocolate. Fill the mould with the tempered chocolate, scrape off the excess, leave it for a moment and then pour it back out, tapping on the mould to get out the excess and then scrape it clean. Leave that to set up. And then using a Ziploc bag, pipe just a small amount of jam, or if you're in the US, you probably call it jelly, into the top of each mould. Then top that with a little bit of chocolate. Give it a bit of a shake to seal over that first section. Then put some peanut butter in a Ziploc bag and pipe a little bit into each mould. Fill the moulds with chocolate, scrape off the excess and leave that to set. Now keep in mind that the chocolate you scrape back into the bowl now can't be used for anyone with peanut allergies. So don't use it in any of your other chocolates if you're going to be giving them away. Once they're set you can tip them out of the mould and you can see here the chocolate that was on the edges is nice and smooth and shiny and the one that was on the top where the silicon mat was has a slightly different texture so it gives a bit of a contrast. And when you bite into them you've got your jam at the top and your peanut butter at the base. Coming in at number four with 30 requests was strawberry. 
Take your strawberries and hull them and place them in a saucepan. Then add some water and rinse them off and then drain as much of that water off into the sink as you can. Place that over a medium heat with the lid on to stew your strawberries. And you're going to need to keep stirring that quite often to stop them from sticking. We don't want to add more water because we're trying to keep the liquid down to a minimum and that's why we're going to have to keep stirring it often. Keep going until your fruit's very soft and then remove it from the heat and stir in your white chocolate. Now I'm making quite a soft filling here. The more chocolate you add, the firmer it will be, but that also dilutes the strawberry flavour and it ends up tasting more of the chocolate than the strawberry. It's up to you whether you keep the lumps of your strawberries or you can push it through a sieve to get it totally smooth. Pour it into a bowl, leave it in the fridge to cool completely. Take two small bowls and put a spoon of white chocolate into each and mix in some oil-based food colour into each one. You can get that from cake decorating stores. I'm just using some yellow and some orange. You can use whatever you fancy. Using your finger, place smudges of each of the colours on the insides of the moulds, just in random places. Then fill the moulds with dark chocolate, making sure you tap to get rid of any air bubbles. Scrape the top clean, leave it for a moment and tip out the excess. Now, we can't possibly eat all of these truffles, so I thought I'd give them away. So make sure you watch to the end of the video and I'll explain how you can get your hands on some. Pipe in some of that strawberry ganache into each mould and then cover it with chocolate. Scrape off your excess and leave it to set. Tip these out of the mould and they look a bit like marbles. I really like these ones. The third most requested truffle recipe was for raspberry. Now you can of course make a raspberry ganache like I just showed you with the strawberry but I wanted to make a filling that was just raspberry. You take your fresh or frozen defrosted raspberries, blend them in a blender until they're smooth with some cream and then push it through a sieve to take out the tiny seeds. This will take a little while to sieve it through but just keep going pushing with the back of your spoon until you have a nice smooth mixture in your bowl and sort of a slurry of seeds left in the sieve. Measure your mix chat and you should have around 240 mils or just a little less than one cup. Heat your sugar and your water and your glucose syrup in a saucepan until the sugar has dissolved and again like we've done before wash down the sides of the pan using a wet pastry brush and then leave it to bubble away. While you're doing that measure out your butter and keep an eye on your sugar mixture and wait for it to turn golden and as I said if it's hard to see with the bubbles just take it off the heat so that you can see what colour it is and as soon as it's golden return it to the heat, add in your raspberry mixture, stirring being careful not to get burnt by that steam and keep stirring until it's smooth. And this took quite a bit of experimenting to develop a recipe for you that I was happy with. It tastes of raspberry and has that perfect gooey texture without using any hard to find ingredients. Then add a candy thermometer to the pan. Make sure it's not touching the bottom of the pan because otherwise you're measuring the pan temperature rather than what's in the saucepan. It should be just off the bottom. And heat it until it gets to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a candy thermometer, you can just take a small amount out and put it on a plate and see roughly how thick it's going to be. Now it's going to be thicker than it looks on the plate because it's going to, as it cools completely it will get even thicker than it is. Pour it into a heat proof bowl and leave it to cool completely. Now for these ones I'm using a silicone mold that is completely smooth so it's going to give us a shiny finish and I'm putting just a little bit of luster dust inside each mold. You don't have to do that, that's optional but if you want to just put a little bit onto each one. Then fill up your moulds with the white chocolate as we did before, tip out the excess, tapping on the bottom of the mould to get out the excess and then let that set up. Take some of your gooey raspberry filling, put it into a Ziploc bag and again pipe just a little bit into each mould making sure you don't overfill them because then it's hard to get a smooth base on them. Gently tap it to smooth it out and use a knife to scrape off any that's gone on the edges as that's going to prevent the chocolate from making a good seal on your filling. Top it up with your white chocolate, scrape off any excess and leave it to set. Once that's ready, just tip out your mould and you have raspberry white chocolate hearts. Most requested chocolate truffle number two is soft caramel. Fill your mould with chocolate, scrape off any excess, tap it on the bench to get rid of any air bubbles, leave it to sit for a moment. The longer you leave it to sit, the thicker the outside chocolate will be. So it does, there's no really right or wrong, it's up to you how thick you want it. And it's less likely to break if it's thicker. Tip out the excess, tap on the bottom of the mould, scrape off the top to make it neat 
and then place some of your dulce de leche into a Ziploc bag and pipe it into the centres. There's a video on this channel showing how to make dulce de leche from scratch. And the hotter you heat your dulce de leche when you're making it, the thicker it will be. And I've left this one a little runnier than I usually do with dulce de leche because I wanted the truffles just to be gooey and runny. Cover the top with chocolate, scrape off the excess and leave it to set. Tip it out of the mould and then I'm using some gold luster dust on a clean, dry paintbrush and putting a little stripe on each chocolate. And then when you bite into these, you're going to have that gooey, liquidy caramel centre. The number one most requested chocolate truffle recipe is for chewy caramel. So to make that, place your sugar and your water into a saucepan and bring it to the boil just like we've done before. Stir until the sugar's dissolved. Once it's dissolved, wash down the sides of your saucepan using a pastry brush that's been dipped in water and then leave it to boil without stirring. While it's bubbling, measure out your cream and your butter and keep a watch on the saucepan and again just spotting it when it just starts to go golden. Stir in your cream and your butter, being careful that you don't get burnt by that steam, and keep stirring until it's well combined and then just let it bubble away on its own. Add a candy thermometer to the pan and we're wanting to heat it up to 255 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a candy thermometer, it's a bit harder to judge when to pull it off the heat, but it's not impossible. I'll show you what it looks like at a couple of different temperatures when you drop some of it into a little bit of cold water. At 240 degrees, it looks like this. It all sinks to the bottom. If you pull it out on your finger, it's firm, but it's not hard, and it makes the wood look a little cloudy. But at 255 degrees, it holds its shape instantly, and it's firm and it's hard. Immediately, you want to pour it into a lined heatproof container and leave it to cool. Once it's cooled enough to handle, and it's firm, but it's still slightly warm, that's when you want to cut it into the rectangles. If you wait until it's completely cold, it's going to be quite hard to cut into neat shapes. Once you've cut them into rectangles, let them completely cool down and then drop them into tempered chocolate. Cover them, pull them out with your fork, tap it on the side of the container and then place them onto your non-stick baking paper to firm up. Put some chocolate into a Ziploc bag and cut off a tiny corner off the bag and pipe some squiggles of chocolate across the top of each one. With all your truffles, like we did last time, you can use a knife to trim off any excess chocolate from the edges. Now, we can't eat all of these truffles ourselves, so I'm going to give away five sets of truffles. And now I've just started a How to Cook That Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Instagram accounts. I know I'm a bit slow on the uptake there, um, but I'll give away one set of truffles on each of them and one here on YouTube. So to enter, all you need to do is find the truffle post on any one of them or all of them if you want to enter more times. Follow, subscribe or friend or whatever you need to do on each one and then write a comment saying, I want truffles. And if it's something that you can hashtag, hashtag how to cook that. And then at the end of the week, I'll randomly draw out a winner. And I don't know how well they'll survive in the post, but I'm willing to post them all over the world so that nobody misses out. I'll put the links to all those social media accounts in the description below this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next week with the perfect sponge cake recipe. Mm -hmm.